Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today I'm going to be doing quite a large book haul. So a couple of months ago I made what I called a quick quarterly haul where I spoke about the books that I'd acquired in January, February and March of 2018 and in those three months I acquired I think like five physical books, one ebook and one audiobook and I was feeling pleased with myself because that wasn't very many and one sort of goal I set for myself for this year was to acquire less books both ebook and physical book, partly just to do with a lack of space in terms of the physical books, because the space is limited in my flat, and also partly to do with the fact that I have a lot of books on my TBR and I am quite bad at having a lot of books on my shelf that sit there for a very long time and don't get read. And I also decided that I wanted to make regular book hauls and actually haul everything that I acquire on this channel as a kind of like accountability thing and also because people seem to enjoy them. So like I said January, February, March um, I acquired like seven books which I think is hardly any at all. The last two months however have been quite a bit less restrained and over the course of April and May I have acquired 23 new books, 22 of which are physical books, only one ebook so that's quite a lot of space taken up on my shelves and quite a lot of books on my TBR. However I'm not I'm not too worried partly because I think I've been doing quite well this year at reading books that have been on my shelves for a while especially my like TBR jar thing is working quite well so basically I don't mind having lots of books on my TBR I don't want to have like a zero TBR that doesn't really interest me and like what would I do if I didn't have any books left that I hadn't read on my shelves that would be sad but I don't want to have a book on my shelf for eight years without reading it which is something I'm quite bad at so I'm not I'm not too fussed I've acquired too many books but I am going to try and acquire less in the rest of the year because it is slightly unsustainable to acquire that many books in that short period of time however I do know that the last two months were an exception mostly because it was my birthday in May and also because it was a booktuber meetup in April so I'll start off with the books that I bought on the booktuber meetup back in April one of them was the Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley I am so excited to get to this I read The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley in April and it is possibly my favourite book of the year so far. I think it probably is my favourite book of the year so far. I loved it so so much there will be a full review of that coming quite soon. I haven't read this yet but I'm hoping to get to it very soon. It is set in the 19th century in Peru which sounds very exciting and I mean I love the watchmaker of Filigree Street so much that I'm just I'm very excited to get to this one. I also bought My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Hopefully by the time this video goes up I will have started reading this as I'm going to be buddy reading it with Marissa from Blakely Bookish. I really really loved reading Rebecca earlier on this year that's been another of my favourite books so far this year and it took me so long to get to Daphne du Maurier but I absolutely love the writing and I thought this would be a good place to go next especially as so many people love it. I know it is about a young man whose elder cousin who's been as kind of guardian to him dies in slightly mysterious circumstances and then he meets his cousin's new wife and things are a bit weird. That's basically all I know but it sounds very intriguing and I love the writing in Rebecca so much that I'm sure I will enjoy this. We went to the Persephone bookshop on the booktuber meetup and I picked up Ruined Sacks by Amy Levy. I picked this up because it was published in the late 19th century and it said on the little like tag that they had underneath the book that Amy Levy is often considered the Jewish Jane Austen and that she was a friend of Oscar Wilde and I thought well that's got to be interesting. I've actually read this already so I'll speak about this in my May wrap up. It's about a young man called Reuben Sachs and his kind of love for this young woman which doesn't really fit in with his kind of plan of the future of his life and his bright prospects so yeah it's a really interesting one and I'll talk more about this in my May wrap up. And then I also bought Affinity by Sarah Waters. I really love Sarah Waters. I have loved Fingersmith and Tipping the Velvet by her and so I thought it was time for me to get another Sarah Waters on my shelf to read in the future. I believe it's partly set in a prison and that's about all I know but it's Sarah Waters so I'm there. And then the ebook I bought this month I actually also bought on the booktuber meetup and this is Marriage by Susan Edmonston Ferrier and this is a book from 1818 and recently Marissa from Blakely Bookish, Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures and Claudia from the Spinsters Library buddy read it together and I'd heard really great things about it on all of their channels and also talking to Marissa on Voxer and then at the booktuber meetup Mel was again telling me how good it was and how much I would like it so I went onto Amazon on my phone and downloaded it onto my Kindle and I'm very excited to get to this probably in July I think. Those are the books that I got at the booktuber meetup and now I'm going to talk through the books that I received as presents for my birthday. Here is Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Nick kindly gave this to me for my birthday. He's already read it, he listened to an audiobook and we have the audiobook but he suggested that he thought it would be better actually in print because of the way the structure works. He loved it a lot and I also know that Weena from Weena Wonders really really adores it. I'll link her channel down below. I've heard that it is science fiction but deals with like the film industry in a science fiction world and that it does really interesting things with form and structure so I think that's enough for me. I am excited for this one. Also the cover is really really fun. Then a few books my parents gave to me. This is All Is Song by Samantha Harvey. I have read Samantha Harvey's other three books 
books before and really really enjoyed all of them so I thought it was about time I finished off reading her body of work so far. This is apparently about two brothers and their relationship after the death of their father and I mean I loved her other books very much and I really like her writing so I'm really looking forward to this one. I think once I've read this one I will do a author spotlight video on Samantha Harvey because I really like her and I feel like I don't hear her talked about on booktube very much although actually her latest book The Western Wind I have heard spoken about on booktube a bit more and that's made me really happy. And then my parents also gave me an artist of the floating world by Kazu Ishiguri. I've been trying to gather together the last few Ishiguro books I need to read so that I can finish off reading all his work. I love Ishiguro, he's one of my favourite writers. The Reigns of the Day and also probably Never Let Me Go and maybe even When We Were Orphans are some of my favourite books of all time. I think he's so skilled and I'm just yeah I'm so excited to finish off everything that he has written up to this point. And again also another one I'll be making an author spotlight video on once I have finished everything by him. This is set partly in 1940s Japan and looks at a painter looking back on his life. I love the way Ishiguro writes books about people looking back on their life. He's just, he's mastered the looking back narrative so I'm very excited for this. And then my parents also gave me The Egoist by George Meredith. I have read this before, I read it about two years ago and absolutely loved it. It just blew me away. It's about a couple who get engaged and then the woman starts to think that maybe she doesn't want to marry this man as she starts to know more about him and it's about like how she tries to extract herself from their engagement and basically about gender politics and power in the Victorian period. It's marvellous and I just, I wanted to own a physical copy of it because I read it on Kindle and it's great. And then my parents also gave me What Matters in Jane Austen by John Mullen. When I read and reviewed Jane Austen The Secret Radical a few months ago, a book that a lot of people said they thought I would prefer as a literary criticism book about Jane Austen was this. I'm very excited to get to it because I love Jane Austen so much and I'm always happy to read more literary criticism on her. And also it might slot neatly into a potential Jane Austen readathon that might occur in the next few months, but more on that anon. Next my friend Jess gave me this book for my birthday. This is The House of Impossible Beauties and this is set in 1980s New York and is partly about the music scene I think. I don't know very much about it but it sounds quite interesting and I trust Jess's taste in books so I'm excited to get to this one at some point in the future. Another book I got for my birthday this is Botcham by Natsumi Soseki. This was given to me by my friend Ellie. I will link Ellie's booktube channel down below because she does have a booktube channel. She hasn't posted any videos on it for over a year but I am trying to persuade her to come back to booktube and she was on for several years before that so there's a big backlog of videos for you to watch if you'd like. Ellie and I had a long chat about Japanese literature at the last booktube meetup and also about like Japanese classics and why we like them so I was very excited that she got me this for my birthday and I'm just looking forward to reading this. It was published in 1906 and it's about a young man kind of making his way in Tokyo society at that stage in Japanese history so it sounds really really interesting and it's very short so I'm sure I will get to it soon. Those are all the books I got as presents for my birthday but I do have quite a lot of books that I bought with vouchers that I got for my birthday so I will go through them now. I got a Foils gift card and a book token for my birthday and so I went to Foils and had a great time picking out four very exciting books. This is The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. I basically bought this entirely because Marissa from Lately Bookish had been telling me how good it was. I'll link her channel down below and also it's beautiful. This is a really nice cover. I don't, I usually much prefer having paperbacks than hardbacks but this is so beautiful that I was quite keen to own it in hardback. I'm really excited to read this. In fact, I'm probably going to buddy read it with the friend who gave me the foils gift card conveniently. I know that this is about a group of siblings who are told near the beginning of their life by a clairvoyant at what age are going to die. And it looks at how that knowledge affects their lives over a long period of time. It just sounds quite interesting. I've heard such great things about it from Marissa that I'm very excited to start it. I then also picked up Maurice by Ian Forster. This is another book for which I can lay the blame entirely at the feet of another booktuber and that is Libby Stevenson. I'll link her channel down below. In fact, I'll link her review of Maurice down below. She just raved about it so much and it reminded me how much I've been meaning to pick this up for quite a long time. I read Howard's End by Ian Forster oh it must be six years ago and I loved it and I've just never picked up anything by him since which is very sad partly because I loved Howard's End and partly also because he's one of my dad's favourite novelists and my dad is much more like a play man than a novel man um, but he loves Ian Forster a lot and this I know I am going to find fascinating. This was written in 1914 but it wasn't published until the 1970s until after Ian Forster's death because it is the only one of the books he wrote that explicitly deals with homosexuality and Ian Forster was gay and obviously didn't write about it because it wasn't considered acceptable at that time and so I think this is going to be absolutely fascinating. I've spoken before about how I find the history of LGBTQ plus issues really really interesting partly because I read and write quite a lot of historical fiction and one of the things I find really interesting in historical fiction is looking at things that weren't written about in the novels of the time. I made a video last Victober about LGBTQ plus issues and undertones in a lot of Victorian novels but obviously there are very few novels from the 
Victorian period and the very early 20th century that do explicitly deal with homosexuality but this is a book that does so I'm just really excited to get to this. The video is going to be incredibly long, I'm sorry, this was, this is a lot of books. I also picked up Secret Passages in a Hillside Town by Patty Jacqueline. I read The Rabbit Back Literature Society by this author a few years ago and really loved it. I just fell in love with like the quirky, weird, glory, literariness of it. I spotted this in foils. It wasn't the book I was intending to buy. I went to foils with a list of four books that I was going to buy and I bought three of them and then the other one I, I, I didn't make it to the Shirley Jackson section because I saw this first. And I'm very excited because I love the Rabbit Back Literature Society so much. I don't know much about this, I mostly picked it up because it's by that author and because the cover is beautiful. But apparently it's about a married man who gets contacted by an old flame of his on Facebook and kind of what goes on from there. In general I don't love novels about affairs, but I feel like Patsy Jekyll Lennon is an author that could pull it off. And also, from the Rabbit Back Literature Society, these books are quite unconventional so I don't think this is going to feel a bit kind of done and dusted like a lot of novels about affairs do for me. So yes, looking forward to this one. And I also picked up The Unconsoled by Kaz Ishiguro because as I said I'm trying to read everything by Kaz Ishiguro and I only have two books left. I know very little about it except that it's supposed to be his darkest novel and it is about a pianist and about the music world. So I am really looking forward to it and I think it will probably end up being the last Ishiguro book that I read. One of my uncles gave me an Amazon voucher for my birthday and I decided to buy this with it because this had been recommended to me by my uncle and I trust his taste in books very much. He is the person that introduced me to Japanese literature and also to Anthony Powell so you know. This is Letter from an Unknown Woman by Steven Zweig. My uncle said it was an incredibly, incredibly moving collection of stories so I'm really, really looking forward to this one. And, but then because on Amazon you only get free delivery if you spend over a certain amount, I topped up my order with three Penguin Little Black Classics. This is Yeats's A Terrible Beauty is Born which I am reading at the moment. I've been meaning to pick up some poetry by Yeats for ages and I currently have mixed feelings but again I'll talk about this in my May wrap up. Then there is Green Tea by J. Sheridan Lafanu. I've also read this already this month and we'll talk about it at the end in my monthly wrap up. I really like J. Sheridan Lafanu. I've read Uncle Silas and Camilla by him before and really enjoyed them so when I saw that this was another short story by him I thought yes I'm sure I will enjoy this one which I did but again I'll talk about that in my wrap up. There's not time here there's so many books. Then I also got that's not the right book this I also got The Old Man of the Moon by Shen Fu. This is is a 19th century Chinese short story about a man's love for his wife. That's what it says on the back. I know very little about this. I, I'm not actually sure why I picked this one. I think I just thought I'd quite like to read a Chinese classic as I haven't read many. It's only tidy. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, only three books left to go. We're doing well. We're doing well. The next two books are books that I purchased with an old Waterstones voucher that Nick and I found in a drawer. I picked up two classics that have been on my wish list for a really long time. This is Evelina by Frances Burney. This has been recommended to me so much as a book that inspired Jane Austen and that if you like Jane Austen you will like. I love Jane Austen a lot but I've read so few books from around that time. To be honest like anything before the Victorian period I've read like Jane Austen and like four other books and that's all and I think that's a real shame and something I would really quite like to change. So apparently it is about a young woman called Evelina who falls victim to the rakish advances of Sir Clement Willoughby. And then I also picked up Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury. Actually this is also, um, I have another book she burned lane for this purchase and that is Yamini from The Skeptical Reader. She does not make YouTube videos anymore but I'll link her Goodreads down below because she does run a Goodreads book club still and she reviewed this book ages ago now and spoke about how incredible it was which just made me really really want to read it. I've also read Fahrenheit um, for <laughs> every time, every time, I don't know what the number is, Fahrenheit 451 that's the one. I love that a lot and I definitely like to read something else by him and I know this is nothing like it, I know this is not dystopian, I know it is set in the 1920s and is partly inspired by Ray Bradbury's childhood and his life growing up and it just Yamini yeah, made it sound so utterly beautiful that I cannot wait to read it. We are actually on to the final book. This is In the Blink of an Eye by Ali Bacon. This is a review copy which Linden Press kindly sent to me and I'm really really excited to read this. It is a historical fiction novel set in the Victorian period about the beginning of photography as an art and kind of how it developed. One reason why I'm incredibly excited to read it is because I know the author Ali Bacon, she was on a creative writing course I did a few years ago and I have read some of this book in an earlier form and loved it. And you all know that I enjoy a book set in the Victorian period so yes, very excited to get to this one. There we have it, that is the ridiculous amount of books that I have acquired in the last few months. Definitely more books than I intended to acquire. I'm gonna try and acquire less for the next few months because I don't think I can actually fit any more books on my shelves. Regardless, I'm very excited about all of these books and I have no regrets so there we go. I think that's all I have to say. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and if there's any you think I should definitely get to immediately. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.